See, so during that pandemic crash, how much money did you lose? Like a hundred grand. Yeah. Okay, so now you're down a hundred grand. Yeah. 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 I mean, not happy. Absolutely. Yeah, you're not happy. Yeah. And you're like, I got to make this back. Yeah. And I wanted to use a different strategy. Okay, that makes sense yeah. too. I remembered my friend had mm. told me about Tasty, and I started looking at your videos on YouTube, and that had me totally convinced. <laughs> okay. You guys would talk about selling options. Yeah. So when I started understanding it, I was still with a different broker. One day, I just took all my money and I put it in Tasty because okay. I felt you guys were the right choice. <laughs> So just give me a tiny little background. We'll start off with that. You're, you're 33. Yeah, 33. I'm from Denver, Colorado, like you mentioned. Yeah. Um, went to high school out there. Didn't go to college or didn't graduate. Um, liked to kickbox. I know we were talking about that. So Muay Thai. Muay Thai, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so I like to do that and um, started trading options in like 2016. Did somebody give you a few shares of stock? Did you ever participate in the markets like a stock market game? Like, where did it come from? Like the stock market all of a sudden out of the blue? Well, in 2012, I bought like XLE, one of these energy. Oh, so spider. 2012, you were like 23, 24 yeah, years old. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. just made a little bit of money. I mean, for me, it was, and I was buying like ETFs, and okay. one of them paid me like a five dollar and twenty five cent dividend. I mean, really low, but to me, that was like, I'm like someone paid me money for not doing anything besides holding the stock. Yeah. So I always liked that idea of- How much money did you have in 2012? You're like 23, yeah, 24. Yeah, maybe 50 grand, 80 grand. Oh, you had that much money? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because you've been working. I've been working, yeah. Built okay. Business, yeah. Okay, so you put some money in the stock market. Yeah. And you bought a dividend stock. You didn't have no idea what you were doing. Probably bought OIH or something like yeah, that. Yeah, XLE, exactly. Oh, okay. I mean, not, yeah. that's a Vanek one. This is uh, yeah, Oh, yeah, 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 sure. But same energy yeah. Uh, sector. Yeah, and I did that, and I just saw it had a high yield percent. I think this was- like uh, E-Trade or one of these companies. Sure. Yeah. Possible. Yeah. Uh, and then it, I looked up one day or woke up and it paid me. And it was something dismal. I mean, like the cost of like a latte or something. But yeah, to right. me, that was the coolest money ever. Because <laughs> I didn't have to go, you know, knock on doors. Okay, and go so, sell something. so yeah. 2012, you got bitten by the bug. Yeah, I heard you say that one time. Once yeah. you get bit, you're done. And yeah, I'm yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah, you're totally done. Totally. Yeah. So you got bit by the bug, you buy some stock, you, you get paid a dividend, you're all of a, like, okay, this is cool, but I now I need to make a lot more money. Yeah, yeah, and um, I, f I had a friend in college who told me about Tasty. Oh, that's good. Yeah, well, let me tell you the Love rest of the story. Love that guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out Steve. Uh, and I didn't like the name, so I didn't look into it. I, I didn't understand it. I just wrote a story about the name last night. Yeah, it's a great name. I just, I didn't. I, <laughs> That's okay, you don't have to understand yeah, I, it. Yeah, I didn't yeah. get it. Yeah. Um, and then in 2020, I had a lot of long equity when the, the flash crash or whatever happened. And for some reason, I thought back, hey, you know, Steve was telling me about Tasty. And I started watching your videos and I realized the information was so much more refined and it was the right information versus, you know, looking at a chart. People can do whatever they want, whatever sure, works. Of course, of course. But for me, that, that didn't work. And trying to time stuff, it, it just didn't. It never made sense to me. It always, I always knew it wasn't going to work. Fast forward a couple of years, and you obviously, from 2012 to let's say 2016, you start. You know, you're you're obviously playing the game. Yeah, you're investing more and more. You're getting a little. You know, you're getting equity across the board. You're starting to get a little diversification, but you're mostly all buying stocks. Yeah, yeah, or, and or trying to buy one and then sell it. I thought that was the coolest thing. Now I don't, right? But. Oh, I bought it for, oh, you know. The first scalp you ever make is oh, the greatest thing in the world. It's so cool. This is so easy. I can just, you know. Because scalping real estate, like we're flipping real estate, yeah. like most people, that's a pain in the butt. You got to. Very gotta, illiquid. You, yeah. It's illiquid. You got closing costs. You got brokers. You got all this. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Right. Flipping flipping stocks on a on a platform for almost for free is the greatest thing ever. It was yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. As long as I won. As long as you win. <laughs> as soon as you lose, you get mad. Yeah. And you get and, and you get mad at yourself, and you get mad at everybody around you, and you're thinking to yourself, "Damn, you know, I, I'm not supposed to lose." So, you 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 tasted kind of options yeah. around 2016. Yeah. So same friend Steve, he hadn't found your platform yet, and he <laughs> had he had told me, "Hey, you can buy a call on this." I think it was like PM or one of these. What's this Steve guy doing? I think he's still trading. I haven't okay, talked good. to him in years. Okay. Um, but he's like, "Hey, you can buy a call," and it went up. And I made, you know, like 100%. It was like went from a dollar to $2 or oh, something like oh, that. That's the truly getting bitten by Oof. the snake. Yeah, got uh, it. I was like, this is so much. You don't have to use a lot of capital. Right? Yeah. It's capital efficient uh, yeah. in that way. And um, from then I was hooked. Yeah. 
Okay, so you trade your first option in 2016 or so. You yeah. buy a call option on something, of course. Of course. Mark goes, and the worst thing that ever can happen to you is you make money on the first trade. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and um, so at that point you think, oh my God, this is too easy. Now I it's have leverage. It's too easy. Yeah, it's yeah. too easy. It's not fair. Well, so what I started doing is trading SPY. Okay. And I just scalp, you know, three or four cents or 10 cents. And then naturally I'm like, hey, I'll, I should add more contracts. You know, this is only long premium, no short okay. premium. I sure, of course. I didn't even know you could go short. Okay. Just, yeah, okay. the information was, is not correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes sense. Um, and it would go up, you know, 10 cents and I'd go out. And it would go up 10 cents and I'd go out. And then finally I was like, it just kept going down. And I was like, all right, I got killed on one trade, you know? And uh, yeah, it was kind of like that for a couple of years where I just kind of buy an option. Um, based on a chart, like I said, people can use charting. It's, it's just, it never worked for me. Now, at the same time, let's be clear. You have a full-time gig. Yeah, yeah, a full-time gig. Okay, so what do you do? Yeah, so in the state of Colorado, we have catastrophe hail, zone, or hail and wind. And when that damages a commercial building or a residential roof, insurance owes them to bring them back to what's called pre-loss conditions. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we do at Artisan Construction is we make sure that your property is brought back to pre-loss conditions. We kind of negotiate with insurance on your behalf. Got it. it doesn't cost them anything. Uh, you know, it's all insurance money. Okay, cool. So you're working full time since, you know, since you're 22 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So, so just to be clear, this trading is kind of like, um, it's a, it's a hobby. It's a passion. Yeah. It's a passion. Now, now you trade every day. Oh, absolutely. Right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And you trade and, and, and just so I finished painting the background, you have a uh, a pretty significant sized um, equity portfolio. Yes, into the very high six digits, and you and you you maintain a long. Diver which how many equities do you say have thirty? Thirty or forty. Thirty or forty long equities. Yes, um, which is like kind of your blue chip core portfolio. Let's yeah, call it dividend paying, and it's all dividend paying. Yeah, absolutely. Because you got that that you can't get out of your head. That's yeah, I yeah. <laughs> Do you also Absolutely. do you combine short stocks with that? No, I don't ever sell stock short. Okay, so yeah. they're all long stocks. They're all dividend paying because yeah. you don't want to owe the dividend. You want absolutely. Yeah, okay, I don't need that. I got. I, I know exactly <laughs> how your brain works, and and you're collecting dividends. You're owning the stock, so you do. You probably had a great January this year. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, a bad probably, last year. A bad yeah. last year, but um, there's nothing you can do. That's a passive portfolio with with a dividend uh, with a. With the dividend paying, obviously, and then you write cover calls against that. Yeah, and I'll sell cover calls at about the thirty delta. Right. Yep. Okay. We'll get into that. We'll get, we'll get more into that. that. Um, and then you also have a smaller, you know, account that you consider your margin account that you that you trade um, aggressive short premium strategies in. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's figure out the time kind of when you started with that um, more aggressive, you know. Um, a portfolio of short premium about what year 2020 2020 yeah so right in time for the meltdown that's it yeah i got okay. killed on the meltdown you got killed on the meltdown yeah, absolutely now did you did you get killed because you had long stocks you killed long stock okay but did you get killed with short premium positions at that time or not i really? didn't really i didn't have any you didn't after really. the flash crash is when i got into tasty okay so after like the whole um debacle the or, pandemic yeah. debacle yeah okay you call that a flash crash the I heard someone call it. That. I don't know. The what flash crash was actually 2010. Oh, okay. Okay, that was before your time. Before my uh, time. Yeah, yeah, before your time. That was that was the that was the actual flash crash. This was more like a this is more like a pandemic crash. Yeah, we, we panic. Call it pandemic yeah, crash. Yeah. yeah. So you got in credit right after that, which is good. Yeah. Because right the market actually continued higher for the rest of the year, so it was probably a good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so talk to me about like your first introduction. So, so you're down. So, so during that pandemic crash, how much money did you lose? And this is on long equities. Yeah, um, maybe like a hundred grand. Hundred grand. Yeah. Okay. So now you're down a hundred grand. Yeah. Now you're you're pissed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, not happy. Absolutely. Yeah, you're not happy. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody loses a hundred grand. Is thrilled. Yeah. Right. yeah. You're mad. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, damn, I just lost hundred grand. Yeah. But I'm gonna quick make it back too. Quick. Yeah, yeah. Quick. Well, it's thirty five days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you're like, I got to make this back. Yeah. Okay. Basically. That's that's fair. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to try some new stuff. And I wanted to use a different strategy. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. too, because what, what you just did didn't work. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so, so talk to me now. Now, what happens? 
so I remembered my friend from college, Steve, that mm. told me about Tasty. And for mm. so, I don't know what it was, but for some reason, I started looking at your videos on YouTube. Okay. And there was like videos about the you know market measures, the short okay. strangle. And then I saw Karen, the super trader. Huh. And that had me totally convinced. <laughs> okay. But you guys would talk about selling options. Yeah. Up until this point in time, I didn't, I didn't understand two markets. I didn't understand a two-sided market. You were a long-only player. Yeah, I didn't even know, to be honest with you, you could. Like, I know that sounds Yeah, you were a long-only player. You just yeah. didn't understand it. Didn't understand yeah. it, yeah. 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 So when I started understanding it, um, I was still with a different broker. Okay. And I was watching your guys' stuff. And I started, but I was still using a cash account. Okay. So there's no benefit to using a cash account, even if you're selling premium. No. You're no. just getting killed, right? You really can't do very much. It's very either. difficult, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially on the call side, because I think yeah, it's three, yeah. three X or, or whatever. Yeah. Or, or you can't even do it most places. They don't let yeah. you do it. Yeah. And so one day I just took all my money and I put it in Tasty because okay. I felt you guys were the right choice. Okay. And the broker called me, hey, you know, we got all these new charting systems. I'm like, hey, I'm okay. Yeah. Uh, so moved there and then started... Uh, getting short delta instead of being so aggressively long. Okay. I emailed uh, Tony in 2020 and I said, "Are you long or short delta?" He said, "Short." I said, "You're crazy." Because I just didn't get it, you know, because yeah, short sure. ball too. Sure. Um, well, at least you understood what delta was. <laughs> <laughs> One of the few things. Yeah. 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 Well, no, I'm just saying it's a step. You know. Yeah. It's a, yeah. yeah. Um, and he told me he was short delta. So I yeah. started getting comfortable with instead of maybe selling. Can we talk about deltas now? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Instead of selling a. Uh, you know, 25 on each side, uh, short put, yeah. short call. I'd move that into 30 and move it to, on the call side and then to the put side would be like 20. Okay. So I started getting some short delta. So you started to figure out that you could like skew stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I didn't want the, like today, volatility's up a couple bucks or a dollar fifty. Yeah, yeah. So if you're long, if you're short premium and long delta, you're going to get killed on the volatility. Sure. And that, I didn't understand that. So he explained right. that to me. Okay, good. So I, yeah, I like that better. Yeah. So, okay. So this is your, now I'm a little more nervous though, because you get your first, you know, cause Tony's helping you. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, no, no. So, so great. So then, so talk to me about kind of, so, so what, what happens? Like, let's go through the progression. So you finish up 2021 at, or 2020 and you're now you're kind of, once you get to that level where you're, you know, you're talking deltas, yeah. you're skewing strangles. Yeah. Your your adjusting positions at that point you know you're all in. Oh, definitely. Yeah, and at that point you know you're you're done. And just to back up real quickly, I ended up just selling puts in 2020. Well, it worked. Well, it, and then I got hit one day. Everything was down. Like major indices were down five or six percent. Oh yeah, sure. Could and it, I didn't understand. Would, this yeah. is where I found out about being long delta short premium. Yeah, uh, got it. It's a problem. Yeah. And so I lost a, not a ton of money, but a decent amount of money. Yeah. And I ended up just u using the strategies you guys talk about: short strangle, jade mm -hmm. lizard, stuff like that, to get it all back um, bef for 2021. That's great. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. And then so 2021 goes according to plan, pretty much. Yeah. 2020. I, I worked a lot that year, so I wasn't trading a ton. Um, yeah. Because I feel like I can do better, you know, in work uh, yeah. financially. Yeah. But yeah, no, that was the last time I ever took a big hit. Okay. W yeah. 2020. It was 2020, yeah. Really? Okay, yeah. that's great. Because there's been some pretty big movement in 2022. Yeah. Um, especially to the downside, yeah. as you know. Um, and uh, and from everything that I've heard, you, you, you did great on a relative basis. Yeah. Even on your stock portfolio, you know, you almost broke even, but on your on your um, option trading, you did great. Yeah. So um, let's talk about, let's get into the specifics. Like just saying you did great, it's not good enough. Let, let's get into like, you know, why'd you do great? What'd you do? So I sold covered calls. Uh, That's on your long. On your oh, you're long talking about on yeah, the, on, yeah, on your okay. on your trading side. The the covered call part, like the covered call part, it's interesting because, you know, the market was down. I, I, I'm assuming you're about half and half between S and P and Nasdaq. Yeah, it made okay. a little more S and P. Yeah. Okay, a little more S and P. So S P was down about twenty yeah. percent. Nasdaq was down. Almost thirty percent. Yeah. yeah. So if you average those two, it's twenty five, and you know between dividends trading, if you're doing dividends and covered calls and everything, you know, y you just lost a couple percent, right? Single. Yeah, digits. I think I was down about four or five percent. Okay, so that's great on a market that's down twenty five percent. Definitely. And, and on just your long stock portfolio. Yeah, just long. And stock. that's because you saved your butt by writing thirty delta calls against it. Well, and I heard you say a long time ago you have a better. I watched a speech you gave about yeah. a water bottle and how. Yeah. Oh, God, that was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> this bottle costs a dollar. 
the implied volatility, which is how much it's going to move, is 30. That means the expected move over the course of the next year is 70 cents to $1.30. If I want to buy this at 90, I'm going to have to limit my upside to $1.15, even though the expected move is all the way up to 130. But if I'm going to want to buy this at 90, I'm going to limit my upside to $1.15. By doing that, I buy this at 90. You buy this, somebody else that doesn't limit their upside buys this at a dollar. Statistically, although my upside is limited, statistically, my probability of success goes from 50-50 all the way up to about 65%. Uh, I would just watch these when I would be driving to work. Yeah, uh, yeah. How, if you reduce cost basis, you have a statistical chance, a better statistical chance to make money. Yeah. And that really made a lot of sense to me. Sure. Because people say, oh, you're going to put, what's the expression? You put a nickel in front of a steamroller. Yeah. You know, and I, so I, that always kind of stuck with me. Uh, but I'm glad I did it last year. Yeah. No, it worked out great. Saved you. Saved you. Yeah. But on the trading side of it, yeah. like, let's talk about it because that was a very successful side. So let's talk about like kind of, Tell me what, like, what are your go-to strategies? Short strangle. To, okay. Yeah. So, and when you do a short strangle, you're pretty much doing them delta neutral? Yeah, or a little short delta. Occasionally, maybe like coin or something that I'm more bullish on, I'll skew it. But typically, zero delta or one. Or okay. Zero one. delta. And and when you're putting those positions on, like, what delta, what's your short delta? What's your what's your duration? Yeah. Uh, what's your duration? What's your short delta? You know, what's your profit target? You know, look, give me, you know. Yeah, I try and pull it off for 25% profit a little quicker. I uh, do okay. about 45 days out, no less than 30 because of the gamma. I don't want to get, okay. you know, 21 sure. days. I don't want to get hit with that. Um, yeah, typically I'll just sell 30 delta on each side. T to be honest, I might go out a little further. 30 sure. delta is a little close. Yeah. Uh, maybe 25. Okay. Very close to 30. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you're going out the 45 days. You're just managing a little earlier. Yeah. Do you adjust in the interim? Absolutely. That's one thing I learned from you guys. Okay. If and I yeah, go ahead. No. How often do you adjust? Through a one 45 day trade, as much as three or four times, maybe more. Got I it. I mean, I just don't want to take the big losses by oh, I'll just wait. You know, oh, I'll just wait. Oh, I'm only down. Yeah. A dollar. You know, but, I don't want to. But do that. now, like the most important thing to me, I think right now is to hear you say. You're you're indifferent to that. Like like it doesn't. Took there, me a long time about uh, the short delta. Not even the short delta, but just the whole adjustment process. Like a lot of people get hung up on. Oh my god, if I, I adjust to, absolutely. If I adjust here, I'm going to lock in a loss and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. To the point where it's like, oh my god, it's second nature. Yeah, and a lot of times, you know, let's say it's thirty delta here, thirty delta here. You start rolling, you kind of get in tighter. Yeah. Then I'll buy it for a loss, which I hate doing. But now I got used to it, and then I'll sell it wider. Yeah, just sell out the guts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Buy the I mean, guts, buy the, the guts, wings. sell the wings. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Um, anything to keep getting credits, keep reducing cost basis, and be right about the 30 delta on each side. Do you notice that you talk like a trader now? Hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it long enough. <laughs> well, you haven't been doing it that long. You're still pretty, you're still pretty new. Like, like do you, but you, do you notice that like, now you just use all the same terms that we use, everything is the same? I'm kind of indifferent to it because the only people I talk to about trading or, you, or listen to are you guys. So this okay. is just kind of how everyone talks. But whenever you talk to somebody about the markets now, I bet you you're going to be like, you, you're just going to get frustrated. When you talk to people outside of oh, Tasty oh, Nation, yeah. you're going to be totally frustrated because you're going to be like, oh my God. This person doesn't know anything. This just happened. I was at a sales conference and this guy said, oh, I do options. And he's like, I made a lot of money on puts. And I was like, were they long or short? He's like, I don't know. So, oh. <laughs> you know okay. And Fair, you're wondering I'm glad yourself. you made money. And you're wondering yourself, how's that uh, even possible, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, it, it's, 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 you told me you were just at a conference and you listened to Kathy Woods talk yeah. about it. Yeah. And you're probably just looking around like people are like, you know, like, yeah. your appreciation for it's so <sighs> different. Well, and I think there's a good lesson there. What you guys have always said is no one knows where the market's going. Of course. So when anyone, whether it's her or someone else, says, you know, these three stocks are going to the moon or sell them short, for me, it's always, well, how would they know? You know, of course. no one knows. Of course. You know? Do you think, like, like certain things, like, what would you say is, are some of the things, I, I know you, we talked earlier, just mentioned that kind of that Muay Thai thing, just yeah. from a discipline standpoint, I'm just thinking about it. Maybe there's, I don't know anything about it. So maybe No, it's very similar discipline-wise. Yeah. But I'm thinking, like, what else, you know, like, like so what are some of the things that, that have changed in your life um, because of trading? Like, what do you do better at your full-time job? It helped me be uh, less emotional and try and be mechanical. Uh, same within Muay Thai. 
because a lot of times when you start getting hit and you show up people get really they kind of start getting real emotional and yeah. that's when you can kind of get hit uh and there's always another move there's always another play what about in the in the business you're in because you're kind of you're on the sales side of the business yeah. and is your has your decision making like are you quicker with everything you do have yeah. your brain like is your brain sp- sped up now everyone around me including my wife is i'm always just moving like it's very difficult for me to not move, not to stay still. So hopefully, yeah, I feel like it has uh, made me a little bit quicker, you know, because I talk to people for a living, so I got to be on my my toes. Risk taking, in general. I like to take more risk now. I think right now, the more risk you take, the more risk averse you actually are. The further you are from danger, you're much more comfortable taking risks. Yeah, and and you know, if you're going to hold stocks that don't pay you anything and pray they go up, that's not a. I mean, that's kind of what I do with dividends and stuff, but. I think it's more risky. Is my How point. do you determine like what you're going to do? I mean, because you've accumulated a pretty sizable amount of wealth. You're a young person. You've accumulated a lot of wealth. Um, and obviously, that's a compliment to success you've had investing and success you've had working. But how do you decide when you make money now, how you divide that up, You know, Great allocate question. your assets? You know. So typically what I do whenever I get you know, say $1,000 or for a round number, I'll put 40% of it into either trading or uh, dividends, uh, long equity short call. I usually do about maybe nine to one or eight to two. Um, Got it. Yeah, that's kind of how I do it. I just yeah. don't, I can't watch it all day, so I'm a little uncomfortable putting all of it in trading. I, I'd I, love I, to. But, I understand that. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's you, you know you're going to be doing it for the rest of your life. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I'm <laughs> totally hooked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's something you're never going to be able to get away from. So... On, on the getting back to the trading side, is there? Do you you said you your favorite go to strategies like strangles and stuff yeah. like that? But do you do anything else? I really I don't do anything long premium. I don't buy calls. No, that's fine. Yeah, do you do any of the even, short premium strategies? Yeah, I might do like a Jade Lizard. Occasionally, I'll buy on a short strangle. I'll buy the wings. Occasionally, I just. It makes rolling a little clunky. Yeah, yeah and, it's clunkier. Yeah, it's yeah, it it's, makes yeah. It's a little clunky. Two with the short call, short put, you can just move yeah, yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah, there's so much. It's so much easier. That's what people I don't I think sometimes don't understand. Do, what do you think? Um, you haven't mentioned yet that you've gotten into futures options. Just not really my my thing. I just don't Why? know. I just don't know enough about it. Yeah, but it, there's nothing for you to learn. I mean, I know. it's just, it's just <laughs> yeah. a different product. I mean, the, everything's the I same. I have traded um, like wheat and soybeans yeah. and, and forward slash CL yeah. and stuff like that. Just but small, yeah. Yeah, but for CL, I'd rather trade like XOP. Yeah, I got it. I'm just curious. Yeah. It's a little more, there's certain there's a certain capital efficiency about some of the futures Definitely. options. And there's also some products that you can't really trade, you know, like... Um, like bonds or something like that that you can't really yeah. do in the equity marketplace. It's... You know that kind of thing. I'm, I'm just, I'm just curious if you've kind of, you know, because what happens is when you get to the point where you're at, you, know, you start to get sometimes saturated with the same underlyings, or you're just looking to, for to yeah, scale a little bit. I, I like to trade anything with high IV. Now, I know that's easier said than done, but yeah. right now it's a great time to trade because you know, and Tasty allows you to see the IV and the five uh, day IV change. So yeah, anything with high volatility, I'll trade. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a very it's a very different approach when people would say people would always be like, you know, the classic approach is, well, I, I want to trade anything that I think is going higher versus anything that I think has <laughs> right. you know, high implied volatility. Yeah, selling volatility is key. When I first started with Tasty, I would sell like a put on Netflix. I didn't even know what IV was. I was just, hey, sure. I'm just I'm going to collect this yeah. amount of money. It, yeah. it sounds good. I mean, now you're just going to put the the mechanics. It's not, you know, you still don't know what Netflix is going to do, but now you're going to put the mechanics in your favor. Absolutely. But if IV is low, I mean, how are you going to make money unless the clock runs out, right? Theta right. runs out. I mean, it's very difficult to make money, in right. my opinion, if there's Now, are you, IV. you're managing early. What happens if a trade goes against you? I just had this on one of uh, Tony's trades, Tesla. He had a Tesla uh, broken wing butterfly. Just keep rolling down, keep rolling down. Eventually, I when it started going up, I bought the guts, sold the wings, and I think I lost maybe like a dollar. Are you gonna? Do you roll out? Um, do you, at twenty one DT? Do you move it on? Yeah, yeah. Or if there's earnings, like yeah. sometimes I'll just like. Do you trade earnings at all? Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to coin today. Okay. Uh, yes, I sh- so am I. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll see how it shakes out. But uh, yeah, I love to trade earnings because it's it's anything as a business owner I can do to condense time is great. 
Because yeah. in my mind, I can make more money. So earning trades, it's just one, you know, one day essentially. Yeah. If, uh, if it goes against you, obviously, then you have to, you know, roll out and add time, add duration, add. Uh, Do you trade any crypto? Not no, crypto is not my thing. Okay, just curious. No issue with people who trade crypto. It's no, just no, no, not. I understand. You just said you want to trade coins, so I was just curious if you're. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Uh, yeah. I just like it because it's high IV, and I think it's pretty well beaten down. Yeah. So I might sell a put on it. We'll see. You know, what I love about your story column is that you're, you know, like I said, you're 33, and you've got, you know, six, seven years experience already. You talk like a freaking trader, like you've been doing this 150 that. that years. That means a lot coming You from talk me. like a 50-year-old trader, which is <laughs> which is great. And, um, and I think that, um, uh, you know, you've got an incredible handle on – both the articulation side and just the just the you know and understanding the basically the foundational side of what we do, and it's really cool to see you know all the successes you're having and just you know somebody that's so level headed and and disciplined and you know got good things out of you, man. Hey, I appreciate you guys having me out here. Hey, yeah. it's great, great having you. Thanks so much. Thank that was you. A fun Tom. interview. Thanks. All right.